hear, maybe when you're not hearing now. Sure. Uh, well, you know, we've got an excellent process with CSIO uh, that, that uh, goes through and looks for negative business impacts, uh, working with the agency that's promulgating the rule. But there may be impacts out there that weren't, uh, that we missed. Uh, and who better to tell us how a rule could impact his or her business than someone that's in that business on a daily basis? What I would like to see uh, is someone that runs a trucking company or someone that runs a, a dentist's office um, being aware of rules that are coming down the line, maybe emailing it over to his or her legal counsel and saying, hey, take a look at this and let me know how this can impact our business. And by doing that, they can get back to us and say, hey, you guys may not have thought of this, but this is going to cause me to have to lay off two of my employees, or this is going to uh, put me in a position where I may have to close up my, my, my business or drastically change the way I operate. That's the kind of feedback that, that we hope to get. So if someone signs up to get agriculture alerts and there is a rule that's going through the process, what, what, would their, what message, kind of message would they receive? Would it include like, um, you know, when the next time they're meeting or when they're taking public comment or ways to take public comment? Yeah, what we set up is a process where they, they'll get an email. Uh, I think everybody's leery of, of signing up for email lists because oftentimes you get deluge, but we're really making an effort to aggregate things together uh, so that they don't get uh, their inbox filled. We're not looking to spam people. We're looking to communicate in, in a decisive way with people. Uh, and so they would get the text of the rule uh, as well as uh, the ability to find out when public comment periods would be um, ways to contact that agency directly and get involved. Uh, and so it, 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 we hope to sort of put all the information in one space in the form of an email uh, that would concisely communicate with the people of Ohio what it is that's in the rule and how it is that they can get involved to uh, have a positive impact and make the rule hopefully less onerous to their business. Was that a rare as, as a J card chair? Do you expect more lengthy J card hearings? <laughs> Well, uh, Marcus, as you know, uh, a good J-card chair tries to take care of all the business before the actual meeting occurs. Uh, and so uh, what I would hope that would occur is that we're giving another portal for uh, Ohioans to become involved in the regulatory uh, rule process. And clearly, uh, the earlier one gets involved, the better uh, impact and perhaps outcome they may have, as opposed to just calling up an hour before the J-Car meeting to say you don't like the rule, which is no matter. Uh, but this way, it's, it's a way that, as Senator LaRose said, you know, people who have specific concerns about areas of regulatory uh, impact can tailor the information so they receive information that's pertinent to them. Uh, and then they can go forward from there, whether it be working through an association or uh, working through CSIO or uh, their local uh, uh, legislator, you know, to, to register a concern or, or a comment on a particular rule. So I, I think we just hope that we see more participation. Ross mentioned a phenomenon that last year's JCAR chair, I called the Monday morning JCAR fire. Uh, which was something that we're hoping to prevent through this, right? That's when, uh, when people find out about something that's on the agenda that day for JCAR, and it's really, at that point, often too late to have much of an impact on trying to, to collaboratively improve the rule. And at that point, JCAR's uh, sort of left with the, the option of trying to talk the agency into uh, extending the period that they work on the rule, or left with sort of two terminal choices, allow the rule to go into effect or propose an invalidation. Uh, again, what we hope to do is try to get people to be more collaborative with this. I think all of us as, as legislators right now, and certainly uh, this summer when, when things slow down, uh, spend a lot of time out there talking to business groups, chamber groups, rotary clubs, whoever else. And one of the things that we hear from time to time are what can we do about the rules and regulations that, that, that we have to constantly deal with. Uh, this will give us the ability to say, well, as a matter of fact, there is something, and it involves you getting involved personally, and, uh, and we can then uh, ask them to, to uh, sign up at rulewatchohio.gov uh, and try to get involved in the process because, again, we don't necessarily know uh, how onerous or, or uh, illogical perhaps a rule may be until uh, the folks that actually have to deal with these rules uh, point it out to us. And, and uh, despite all the processes that we have in place to analyze rules, uh, which are robust and, and good, there's nothing better than hearing from the people that actually have to live with the rules and regulations, and that's what Rule Watch Ohio is all about. What 
what's the turnaround time on the information as far as when an action occurs versus how quickly you would receive an email? I believe it happens basically in, in, in real time uh, from the LIS perspective. Uh, if I have an emergency today, you'll get the email tomorrow. So it's always next business day. So it's essentially, uh, we don't want to be sending emails out constantly, but on a, on a sort of a, a cycle when a new rule action is taken, uh, you can be updated essentially the, 